it's Hannah and today I am making a 3D peyote bow. It's kind of reversible but that is definitely the back as it is not as attractive as this side. They're not that difficult to make. Like I found the tutorial on Pinterest and I will put the original pin and the site where the tutorial is um, down below. It is completely in what I believe is Russian but I might be wrong. Um, it's, it's some kind of different alphabet anyway. Um, but I followed the pictures. But I got a request for this on Instagram um, and so I thought I'd show you how to make it. It's not complicated to make, it's just difficult to show how to make using small beads and all of that. But um, the focus on the camera does go in and out a little bit but I hope you, you can still see what I'm doing. I chose really cute colours, I really like it. Um, I'm trying to think like what you could do with it. I've seen some people put a jump ring underneath this band bit so they make the band a bit longer and they could put a jump ring underneath it or I suppose you could attach something to the beads at the very top here um, that would also work but I just thought it was super cute I'm even tempted to sew it onto a hair clip um, as that would also be adorable it uses a technique called odd count peyote and then the center band uses a technique called even count peyote it looks, this does look very similar to brick stitch, but you won't be able to use brick stitch to do it um, because it isn't as, brick stitch isn't as flexible as peyote is, so you will come up with some difficulties. But if you don't know how to do odd count peyote and all of that and how to decrease in peyote, I handily do have a video um, in which I do decrease and I do do odd count peyote. <laughs> do do. Um, and that is my beaded name bracelet uh, tutorial and you can go and check that out and if you can't see in that then there are plenty 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 of other tutorials on YouTube that show you how to do odd count peyote and how to decrease in peyote because they are the techniques that you are going to need for this um, tutorial but anyway I've waffled on for long enough and this is going to be a really long video this bow took me about two and a half hours to make if not longer what time is it now yeah exactly two and a half hours to make so yeah it's not a quick one, but it is a cute one, so it's definitely worth it. But yes, that's enough waffling from me, let's just get on with it, shall we? So to make these beaded bows, you are going to need some size 11 Mayuki Delica beads, a size 10 beading needle, some beading thread, and a bead stopper. So to start with, we are going to pick up one outside colour, 21 inside colour, and one outside colour as you can see. Then we're going to start our odd count peyote. So picking up the outside colour, we are going to go through the first inside colour of the row and then pull that tight. And I used far too much thread, you only need about a metre because then you're going to finish it off. But yeah. So then pick up another inside colour, skip the next bead and go through the one after. And I'm having a hard trouble, hard time doing this, clearly. I'll tell you what it is, it's staying in focus whilst trying to see what you're doing whilst having too much thread. <laughs> oh, beadwork and videos don't go well together. But I'm just going to repeat this for the rest of the row. So you're going to pick up a bead and then skip the next one and go through the one after that. That's essentially all Odd Count Peyote is. You're going to make sure that the bead you just picked up sits on top of the bead that you skipped, if that makes sense. Um, so it kind of has beads standing up, it kind of has teeth, if that makes sense. I'm moving my wrist around and have a jangly bracelet on. Sorry if you heard the jingles, I'll keep my arms still. Um, but yeah, you're going to keep repeating this. Don't forget that if you are following along with the video as you're making this and I'm going too fast for you, pause the video, catch up, and then come back to me. Yeah? Cool. So, we are going to pick up the last inside colour of the row. You're going to go through the final two beads, because it's all Count Peyote. Um, go through the final two beads. You're going to pick up another purple bead, which looks far more pink in real life than it does on camera, but that's fine. And then you're going to go through the second to last bead and the bottom bead. Oh my goodness, it's so difficult to explain in words. And then you're going to go through the bead directly above, which is the last inside colour bead of the row. You're going to go back through that middle bead and then through the bottom outside colour bead, which is the very first bead you picked up. And then you're going to pull that tight and get your thread caught around your beads. 
and then you're going to go through the bead that you've just attached and you're ready to start again. So we are decreasing on both sides. We're going to make a diamond shape and we started in the middle. So picking up your outside colour, you're going to go through the sticking up inside colour bead. And then for the rest of the row you're going to do inside colours and then the very final gap is going to be an outside colour. And you're basically, yeah. Then we're going to do a bit of wiggling around, but you'll be fine. So, we are now attaching the last outside colour, because we're decreasing. And then you need to be coming out, facing away from you, of that bead that we just saw. Now the easy way is just to go through it, but then you see the thread and we don't want that. So you're going to go through that underneath bead, um, so it's the underneath outside colour bead of the very first row that you did and untangle your thread. This is why you don't use too much thread. Learn from my mistake. Um, I learned eventually. I should have cut it down. Um, and then you're gonna go through that middle bead and then through the bead to the bottom left of it. I always get my lefts and my rights wrong. Anyone else? Anyone else? Good. Um, if you find it difficult to pull your needle through, use pliers. Yeah. They're just flat nose pliers, nothing with teeth in, um, or chain nose pliers as these are, and it just helps to pull it through. Um, go through the bead above that, and then go through the bead underneath the one that you just attached. I'll tell you what, the, um, the blog that I got this in these instructions from has a really handy little picture guide. Um, so feel free to go and check that out if that helps. They've drawn on where, where to put the thread. But then we're just going to go back through the outside colour bead um, in the direction that we actually want to go through. So we eventually got there. But yeah, starting again, pick up an outside colour bead, go through the next inside colour bead, continue along the row doing inside colour beads until you get to the very last gap and then you're going to do an outside colour bead because we're decreasing, as I keep saying. So, final bead going through, it's an outside colour bead, as I've literally just said. Um, and then you are going to, so we want to go out of that bead in that direction. This is a lot easier than before. So you're gonna to want to go through that middle green bead that we went through the first time, then the one just underneath it, and then grab your pliers, because it hurts my thumb to just pull it through. I think it splits my nail, I'm not entirely sure, but I have a split in my nail, which has only come around from beading more. Um, but yeah, and then go up through the bead directly above the one that we were coming out of, which is underneath the purple bead, and then come out of the purple bead. So much easier to do that, I find, than to wiggle all the way back around and through. But we are literally just going to keep repeating these steps um, until you have one point at the top. So just keep decreasing on each side until you have one bead at the top and then I will be back well the video will be back I'm still here see told you so <laughs> we are picking up that last bead and going through there um, I just kept decreasing as I've just said and so then you're going to finish off this thread um, to do that you don't need tiny knots or anything just sew back through your beadwork following the pattern of the beads making sure that none of your thread is showing which is a lot easier than I'm making it sound. Um, but just keep sewing back through your beadwork and making sure that everything is, you know, fine and dandy. So this way, that way, forwards and backwards over the Irish Sea. Cut off any excess. So then I've cut another length of thread, or I've probably just continued to the mad, massive length that I had in the beginning. And I'm going through one of the end purple beads, and I'm not bothering to sew in the end yet because I'm lazy. Um, and then picking up an inside color and then going along with the outside colour. And we're going to repeat what we did on the other side. So you're going to keep peyoteing until you've decreased it. So you've only got one bead in the middle. So you have a nice symmetrical diamond. Huzzah! Isn't that a treat for the eyes? And then we're going to do a small version of this because clearly I'm not showing you the small diamond or showing you the diamond. Um, so you're going to start by picking up one outside colour nine inside colour 
one outside colour for 11 beads in total. And then you're going to repeat what you have just did, which is going to sound really um, lame. But you're going to do odd count peyote, you're making a diamond half the size of the diamond you've just made. So odd count peyote, pick up an outside colour bead, go through the next inside colour bead, pick up an inside colour bead, skip the next bead, go through the one after. Ta-da! Um, and you're going to keep decreasing on the side until you have one bead point and then you're going to join on a new bit of thread and keep decreasing on the other side until you have one bead point. So you have a nice small dinky diamond and this is for the little tails of the bow. Yeah? So if you don't want to have the tails of the bow, skip this step so you just have like the big bit. I don't know how to explain it. So I didn't cut off the thread of one of the ends of the bow, uh, of the small diamond, sorry. So counting seven outside colour beads down and three inside colour beads up, so that one, feel free to pause it if you need, if you need to work it out. I'm attaching the small diamond onto the big diamond, making sure that it all sits nice. Um, so yeah, I didn't cut off the thread off one of the ends of the diamond. I think it's the very, I think it's the tail that I'm using. Um, so I went through that bead, and then I'm just going to sew on this tail or this this small diamond onto the big diamond. So go back through the first purple bead, go back up through the purple bead next to it. Crack out your pliers, save your hands, and then I'm going to go back through that green bead. It doesn't have to be the most secure thing ever. People aren't going to be pulling on it, hopefully. If they are, make it the most secure thing ever. So we need to come out of this bead here, that one. So to do that, just sew back through your beadwork um, as though you were finishing off, but just head towards the bead that I demonstrated, which I think is the third one down from the top. Um, in fact, I know it's the third one down from the top, and I just sped this bit up because it took me far longer than necessary, and I'm out of shot for some of it, and I find it super difficult to do beadwork on camera. I maybe should choose a different thing to film me do, but I enjoy doing it. So, we need to make it curved, so we're going to sew them together. Um, so you're going to go through the equivalent bead on the other side, so it's the third bead down from the top, on the same side, yeah it's just the third bead down from the top, you can see what I'm doing, you can see, this bit kind of is in focus-ish. And then you're going to pull it, and make sure you bend it before you do this, but you're going to bend it and hold it together, and it does not want to bend, believe me. So then you're going to go back up through the bead that we originally wanted to come out of, um, and just that's just loops it round and then I wanted to go up through the next just the next one but I went, ended up going through the next two because I clearly don't think um, it's super difficult to show how to do because you have the small diamond that's in the way that wants to be involved in the party and then you've got the big diamond which doesn't want to be folded doesn't want to be friends with the other side which does create the nice shape but it's really awkward to film um, because I always want I just wanted to keep it near my face but I couldn't um, but yeah just sew them together <laughs> so you're gonna come out of one side go through the bead opposite loop it back round and go back through that first bead that you're coming out of so you see I'm coming out of a bead here I'm going down into the bead opposite Oh, finally, I get in focus. My goodness, I'm get, starting to get on my own nerves. Please don't comment about the focus, please. I'm really, really sorry. I'm trying really hard, but it's super difficult. Um, so yeah, keep doing this. And it's, yeah, you can see what I'm doing. So then I just repeated that. So this is the second half. And then we want to sew them together. Um, so doing what you just did, so I'm coming out of a bead, I'm going to go through the equivalent bead on the other half, this is the first half we made, and um, I had broken a bead 
on the second half that I made, which is on the back and you can't see it, luckily. And so I was being really, really cautious and I was really scared that another bead was going to break and the whole thing was going to be ruined. Um, but it didn't, luckily. But just keep going through, think of it like symmetry, in that if you go through a bead on one side, you need to go through the same bead on the opposite side, just in the opposite direction, so it's not like symmetry at all. I'm talking out of my feet. So then back up through that bead there. And you want to make this quite secure. Um, ideally, I would want to go through it again, but I don't think the beads themselves would have allowed me to do that. These, this is the only thing that is keeping your beadwork sort of attached together. But now we're making the band. So you're gonna to want to pick up one outside color, two inside color, and one outside color, and we're gonna be doing even count peyote, super easy. So pick up a um, outside color bead and go through the next inside color, and then pick up an inside color bead, and then go through the next outside color. Mm -hmm. It is kind of in focus. This was a terrible camera angle, Hannah. Why did you think this was a good idea? And then you're gonna repeat that again. So an outside color bead, go through the next inside color, pick up an inside color bead, go through the next outside color, and keep repeating this um, until your band is long enough to go around the middle part of the bow, which is the bit that you just joined together. Um, it varies for everyone. So yeah, this is long enough to go around the middle of my bow. And so it's really difficult to demonstrate how to do it on the bow. So I'm gonna show you how to do it off the bow first, but just do this on the bow because there's no point doing it off the bow because otherwise you won't be able to attach it. So this is going around the middle of the bow. So you want to go through the purple, opposite purple bead and then the mint green bead on the other side. You are literally zipping it up. So you're going through one side, then the other side, then the one side and then the other side. Yeah. So then I'm going through the green bead and the purple bead and then you see it just all slots together and you can't see where the, it begins and where it ends. But you're going to want to do this around the middle of your bow and cover up the bead that broke, um, which is very useful. So that's me going through the purple bead and getting it hooked on everything. And then going through the green bead on the opposite side, then go through the purple bead. Nope, that's green on the opposite side and then go through the purple bead on the other side. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm not making much sense in this video. I'm really sorry, I'm trying, I'm really trying. But then you are just going to sew in the end of your thread and then you are done. Super cute, I really like it. Oh, I'm excited to wear it. It would be adorable on a brooch. Yes, yes. So now you know how to make your own bead bow. I was gonna say how easy it is. It is easy, it's just a lot of steps. And for someone new to beading, it might be a bit complicated. Um, I recommend trying something a bit easier first, like a beaded name bracelet, uh, to, familiar, to familiarize yourself with the stitch um, before diving in the deep end. But it is really cute and it is entirely worth it. And I'm not very good at peyote and I managed to do it, so. One of those. I can't wait to see the colour combination that all of you come up with if you decide to make a bow like this. I'm really excited. Um, it'll be really cute with blue outline and in white, like sailory. I don't know, might just be really cute. Or spotty, I have a thing for polka dots. But yeah. If you do decide to recreate anything, I really wanna see them, and you know I do. So feel free to post them on social media using hashtag the corner of craft, so I can check them out for myself and see how talented you all are. If you want to follow me on social media, you can find the link, all of them actually, I have several social media accounts, you can find all the links in the description box below. All the beads and materials and everything you will need, there's also a link for those in the description box below um, and where I obtained them from. I bought them, that sounded like I stole them. I definitely bought them. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, give it a big old thumbs up. Your support truly means the world to me and why not hit subscribe? I post new craft tutorials here in the corner of craft every Sunday and then I post bonus videos in the week as well and your bonus videos this week were um, that we had to get ready with me on Tuesday and then on Thursday I told you how I stopped my hair colour fading because my hair is currently blue, purple and green for those of you who are new to the channel.
But yes, I think that's everything that I have to say in this tutorial. I really stabbed my thumb while making this and it bled a bit and I got blood on my bead mat and I there's kind of a small mark, but um, it's a bit stressful and my thumb really hurts now. Who knew that beading could be such a dangerous, dangerous hobby? Thank you so much for watching. It really, truly, honestly does mean the world to me. And I shall see you very soon in my next video. Bye. If you did enjoy this video, it would mean an awful lot to me if you did head on over to my Patreon page and support me over there. Link can be found in the description of this video. And thank you very much for watching.